call the meeting for the Woodbury Select Board to order at 6.01 on Monday, August 12th. And um, I just wanted to let folks know, some of the folks have already heard this, we have a really packed agenda tonight, so um, please don't take offense if I um, remind everybody before their segment how how much time we've dedicated to I each one. <laughs> I would love everybody to stay, but um, mm -hmm. I just want us to be as efficient as we can. We have a packed agenda. Um, so the first thing is adjustments to the select board agenda, and I'd like to suggest that we move this, uh, the 755 item set property tax rate to just after the delinquent tax collector's report. Um, is there any objection to that? No, nope. okay. good idea. All right. Um, Set property tax rate. And then the next um, item, is there a motion uh, regarding the July 22nd and July 29th meeting minutes? I'll move that they be approved. Is there any discussion? Okay, hearing no discussion. All those in favor of approving the minutes from July 22nd and July 29th as aye. written, please say aye. 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 And they are... Right here somewhere yeah. for you to sign. Yeah, I signed them already. I did too. Oh, yeah. uh, but are there okay. two, do we have to sign two sets? There's two of them. I only there. signed one set. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and then um, public comment for items that are not on the agenda. I think both you gentlemen are here for um, it That's exactly. It. It. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so the next item moving on is our town clerk's report. Robin. Mine will be short and sweet. It's election, election, election. Yeah. Polls <laughs> are open from ten tomorrow until seven tomorrow night. All right. At the town hall. And you will be there tomorrow night. You, Chris. Yes, I will be there. Okay. Yeah. I, I wasn't on that list, the schedule. I'm happy to be there. So, 7 o'clock. At 7. Be there at 7. Yes, I will be there That's for sure. So, Robin? You, you said you'd oh. be there by 5. <laughs> I did, but then when you set out the schedule, my name wasn't right. on it. But I have to have three people for each one of the sections. I'm happy to be there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just didn't know. Yeah, that's something you this year with the, the election that happened yeah. two years ago. They have to okay. make sure everybody watches everybody and everybody's yeah. T's are crossed. And really? Mm. Yep. Um, I think somebody's trying to get in through that. You have to make Thank sure you. when they step up to the tabulator that they're putting it in face down. Okay. So nobody can see how they marked off their ballot. Okay. Well, one of those people are going to be standing there by the machine, right? Mm -hmm. So me being there by five is okay? Yep. Okay. It'll be good. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And then four? Okay. I did not realize that was tomorrow. Yes, yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> I'm glad you said All right, that's it's it? What I got. Wow, nice job, Robin. All right, moving on. Randy's got the town treasurer's report, which we have um, a copy of yep. in front of us. A bunch of stuff happened in the last three weeks. Um, so, taking in on cash receipts, $19,855.86, which of, that was included in that school insurance for the fiscal year, we paid it and they reimbursed us. Of $12,569. Delinquency taxes, delinquent taxes I took in, $2,291.88. Prepaid taxes, $633. Hartwick Area Community Coalition. They sent us a check of $3,507. They closed, they closed the, um, they closed the fund. They closed the, and so what they did was divide their funds per town and really? dispersed it that, that oh. way. So that was kind of a surprise. Oh. Um, other goodies was recording, dog license, etc. Uh, electric, electronic transfers that were put into our account, state of Vermont class two and three roads. They bumped up three deposits into 
this one month to make sure towns had money um, for class two and three roads. So $58,920.93. State of Vermont created and just passed a fiscal year 24 budget adjustment act. So that now has its own fund. It's fund 19. Um, it's not grant approved, so you don't have to approve this money, but I do have to track it and make sure I can tell the state exactly what we spent this 30000 on. Mm. Um, so it's in its own fund. I set it aside. So this is for, this is road funding? funding? Yes, but it can't double dip into FEMA. Oh, yeah, that's fine. So. Um, Spending on the rail trailer. Why, so right? That's what, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> why it's in its own fund. Yeah. Um, so other things, uh, state of Vermont for property tax adjustments um, for this current tax revenue, uh, $3,708. Swenson's final fourth quarter gave us $8,166.28. Um, and I have up on the table, on the right hand side of the bills, right in front of you, Chris. Right, right yeah. there. So that's a breakdown of what Swenson gave us for last year's quarters, where it went down. We typically budget for 35,000 in the highway, and we only received 28 last year, um, which is gonna be another dip down if this year goes the same way. And is that just because it's depending on how much they pull out of the quarter? That's what they say, yeah. Um, payroll, $14,695.56. Accounts payable, $67,029.36. Today I transferred $57,000 from the money market over into the checking. Um, other goodies. Mm. Other goodies. Um, so any questions on the treasurer's portion? On the what portion? Treasurer's portion. So moving on to um, I'm on agenda next for delinquent tax collector. On the table I have where I chose an attorney. Oh yeah. And there is a packet that is now requesting select board signature. So I cannot choose an attorney without having the backup of the select board um, for this. Um, and did um did you get a recommendation from somebody? For, I did. Yeah. Yep. Actually, my attorney suggested oh, of course. that. Okay. My attorney from last year's tax sale recommended um, them out of Burlington. Because I they're not doing it anymore. The one. He's correct. not doing okay. it anymore. Correct. So currently, um, I have sixty-two thousand eight hundred eighty-seven dollars and ninety-seven cents still delinquent um, as of today. And those are? As far as wanting names or? Yeah. Oh, I think we would get the names. I'm not going to list them off. OK. We have discussed. But the but that information is available, oh, right, in the right. town yeah. office, yeah. right? OK. Any, uh, oh. any request I have to give anybody on uh, the delinquency list. Mm -hmm. And Brandy, I remember from like an earlier meeting you saying that you were disappointed that your the current attorney that helped you with that was wasn't doing it anymore because there was some structure that they had to their billing that was beneficial to us. But no, I can't remember. No, he, he's resigning from doing tax sales. Right, but I mean. But oh, so sorry. in that that piece, um, he had done them at no expense to the town. Yeah, for the tax sale. His fees would come out of the, the tax. delinquent payer. Um, in this case, that doesn't always happen. So right now I have four that are two years behind. Um, if you times that by 15%, they're only going to be getting roughly $2,000. The attorney. Correct. Yeah. Okay. My policy is you're two years behind with no payment, it's gone. Um, and it's because of having to choose an attorney that's going to come out of taxpayers' money, hypothetically, if they over if they overdo the work, 
the attorney, the new attorney does work that's up and over the 2,000. That's what they're wanting. The 2,000 would be? The 15%. Of all the total, of all the The four sales pieces that you're have. going to tax yeah. them. Yes. Mm. Um, so it's just, they yes. want backup from the town that mm -hmm. if they don't, if they dig themselves in a hole of too much work, that the town's going to, and I don't, that's not a warm, fuzzy feeling for me. I don't think any of us should be the brunt of somebody mm -hmm. who wants to be, not pay their taxes. Mm -hmm. um, but that's where it's left. No attorneys are doing it now. It's covering their tail. So what, what Bill Davies was doing was basically by the law, right? The law that said that they could could collect a certain percentage, yeah. Is the state statute. The state statute, but the state statute's not keeping up with what the lawyers want to make, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. If they go up and beyond, they want the backup of it. Mm -hmm. Or if I resign early, um, that they have the select board that um, is backing on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you inquire about the rates at all? I'm just curious. I did. Are they pretty standard? I mean, I don't know how much variance there is across the board between attorney rates. Um, within fifty dollars of each other. Okay. Yeah. So these are in they're in the mix with all that and okay. So the other change is that when somebody pay, buys a property at a tax sale, you have to keep the money now. I do. I'll have to open an escrow account. Yeah. Okay. Because they yes. have the ability to pay it off within a year. The old attorney um, have a, dealt with that, dealt with the escrow. I didn't hold anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now it's, they're putting it back on our shoulders mm -hmm. to keep track, babysit. Mm -hmm. Until the year's up. All more fun stuff. Mm -hmm. So you probably would like a motion from the board to hire Monahan Sahar as an attorney for I the tax sale process. I on two others closer. Um, and I did get a price from one, but the other one did not call me back. Mm -hmm. So what does the board think? I would be inclined to vote yes. Do you have a motion? Um, we can have a discussion after you make the motion. Sure. So uh, I thought you just made a motion. I guess uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's that. Uh, well, yeah, I'll make a motion um, to hire Monahan so Monahan so far. So far. So far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, to represent our town in the tax sale yeah. proceedings. Second. Is, is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of hiring Monahan Safar to be our attorney for the tax sale process, please say aye. 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 The motion passes unanimously. Thanks, Brandy. Okay. So I have a paper from Ron about errors and omission certificate for the grid list. This comes from home. Oh, uh, right. um, both. Yeah. Adjustment to the grand list. Mm -hmm. So they need is just is this just like I it's information? Just information. Great. There's no no action necessary in, from the board. For a signature. It doesn't seem to be. It says please. Mm -hmm. Just says please give to the board. Mm -hmm. I guess they'll let us know. If yeah. They need something. Does it need to be filed somewhere? Give it to Michael, he'll put it in the minutes. Okay. Okay. Owner change reason. The town of okay. You want to put this in the minutes? I guess so. Okay. 
Thanks, Michael. So on the next um, is fixing the tax rate. Mm -hmm. So when I started looking into um, our tax chart that I have, um, we didn't need to raise, there was no red flags to me to be the 190000 to be raised. Um, and all the money we raised from last year for special grants, um, yeah, there's no double dipping. So removing 190,000, um, increasing it by 25,000 for the 15,000 additional culverts and 10,000 on gravel, it brought the new tax rate to 0.5865. Okay, everybody applause mm -hmm. quick. <laughs> So that is, I'm asking the board for them to approve that. Compared to last year's uh, municipal tax rate was 0 0.71, so it's it's a good decrease. decrease there, yeah. Yeah. Since the education will be going up, it's not. Yeah, all. I just did a real quick calculation, and I th I don't know if it's right, but. Looks like the homestead would would the increase in the school um, would increase by three point two seven percent and the non homestead by five point six eight percent. I'm not. I won't swear by that because I don't do well at calculating during a meeting. There's too many other things going on. So. <laughs> but yeah. This is totally Other, otherwise the uh, the. Uh, Non-homestead rate just for the school was going to go up 16 percent, and the homestead rate just for the school was going to go up 12 percent. So. Right. I'm going to make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the tax rate of 0.5865. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the tax rate at 0 0.5865, please say aye. 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 The motion passes unanimously. Thanks again, Brandy. Yeah, nice, nice job. Good job. Yeah. All right. Um, we're cruising. Mr. Marcassani, thanks for coming. Um, you are next on the agenda for the plans to upgrade the IT system benefits and costs. This is turning out to be a complex project with many moving and changeable parts. Mm. So it's trying to, you know, it's a snapshot in time. Uh, two things happened in the last week. On Monday, last week from today, we had a meeting with RV Technologies to go over their proposal. And uh, in the course of going over the proposal, there were some things that were missing, so that we could then went back and revised the proposal preliminary proposal to us sometime this week. Secondly, the library's PC guide. The what? Oh, the library. And guess yeah. who shoulders that fell off? So, <laughs> and what? Guess, Thank you. Guess who shoulders that fell off? Uh, hopefully, the lot, they will be installed and back up and running on Wednesday in time for. Open house. Yeah, and, and they've been functioning with their laptop, but it's, it's not cool. ideal. So, uh, the whole point of investigating RB technology is to one, make the town as hacker proof as possible. When I say the town, we're talking the clerk's office, we're talking the library, we're talking the garage. We're talking the, uh, uh, the town hall, so, but there's not much of a risk there. Did I get them all? Uh, so that, that basically is coming under one umbrella. Uh, they basically would be ins installing software and hardware to allow full remote monitoring and management of all the IT resources in the town. So, for example, 
Uh, if Robin thinks she's got a strange email that might be a scam, right now she emails me and says, this, this is a scam. And she's pretty good. She gets them on the head about 99% of the time. Uh, that would, the bulk of that would happen one man. Did anybody happen to see 60 minutes last night? Guess what it was? Hacking. Ransomware and hacking. Oh. <laughs> and they said it is, it, it, it is increasing exponentially. Uh, hmm. Expect to get hacked. So we're basically putting in place insurance to try and prevent that, and we're putting in place, uh, we're, we're taking all the knowledge that's in my head and we're exporting it to a stored medium so that if something happens to me, the town is not in trouble. Not all of it, I hope. Well, Just the, the, <laughs> sorry. It'll still reside in my brain, but it'll be an RV technology. If we were to do this, we still need an IT knowledgeable person or mm. people uh, available to the town because we basically have to be the first line of inquiry before going to IT technologies if there, there are issues. For example, the, the library PC dying, mm -hmm. that my new PC. So I work uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and this morning, not full time, but over five days to get that back to a point where we can bring it back to the library. But it's probably not complete yet because since it died, mm. I didn't have a software inventory that was on there. So we have to basically see what's missing. If RB Technologies had been involved, we would have backups that we could resort to. Mm -hmm. And they could basically recover that. There would be a charge to recover that. Okay, but they In addition recover. to the $750 a month? Yes. Sheesh. All you're all you're paying for that seven fifty a month or seven whatever seven seventy I think a month is the remote manager of the computers. That's the updates. That's the antivirus software. That's the uh, the backup and recovery. Uh, that's the uh, the spam protection. And the list goes on. Uh, so what are we looking at right now in terms of monthly expenses? And this again. Uh, hopefully we'll have this nailed down in the next month to two months. So we're looking at $770 monthly charges to RV Technologies for the service. We're looking at $75 a month for Microsoft, for Microsoft 365 Office, which is required by RV Technologies. Uh, we're looking at $616 a month for CD Fiber Internet, which I finally got them to commit to prices those prices are only $92.42 more a year than what we're currently A year? Paying. Really? To Comcast yeah. and Consolidated Communications for $7.70 a month. Right. Now, that's what's been committed to me over the phone. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll see what it is in writing. When it yeah. the show. Mm -hmm. uh, so the total monthly cost for IT technology here is about fourteen hundred and sixty one dollars. Okay. Wait a minute. Fourteen hundred and sixty one. How's that? That's seven compared to seven fifty. Seven seventy for RB Technologies, seventy five mm -hmm. for Microsoft Office, and this the internet service is a six sixteen. You're already paying that six sixteen, so to speak. Oh, okay. So, so it's just, not an increase. It's not an increase, but this is what the monthly expense would be. Okay. So the one-time costs uh, are a little bit higher than what I thought they would be. Uh, it was about $6,000 for RV technology to come in and physically install all the upgraded hardware for the network mm -hmm. uh, in the clerk's office, in the library, and uh, not a lot to do in the garage, not a lot to do with the town hall. But for example, one of the things that needs to be done just turn around and open that cabinet door. Just look at the mess that's in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, the top little bit is off. That's the rest of the school. That's a fire hazard. Mm. Here's here's our fire chief here. Yeah. <laughs> RB Technology said that's that's got to be fixed. Well, that's the schools. That's not the town. No, that's the towns. The top. She said the top section. On the top. Okay. That's the, the towns. That's the towns. Okay. Uh -huh. This is the schools, 
Supposedly, this stuff is not used. Oh. But it cannot be in an enclosed cabinet with no vents. Mm. And the other, and, 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 and this has got to be either replaced or it's got to be a cabinet added here that that stuff can go mm -hmm. into. And that's part of what RV Technologies mm -hmm. has proposed. The other issue we've got, since we've got fire chief here, is you've got an electrical panel there that you can't get at. Okay? See that panel there with the yeah. things on it? That's where the electrical panel is. Try opening that. Mm. RV Technology is going that one out too. So mm. somehow that's got to be resolved, but that's not on the list to do from the IT standpoint. That, that's <laughs> got to be on another list. Mm. Okay, so what, what are we talking about for RV Technologies? Uh, what are we talking about one-time costs? $6,000 to get all the stuff upgraded. That's basically their time. Okay, there's $6,350 in new network equipment that's smart as opposed to the network equipment that we have today that's dumb. 6350 Yes. I, I have I have this if you want it. Okay. And then uh, to rewire the uh, the network in the office that's to have an electrician come in and run all new network cabling back to the central point in the basement uh, on that interior south wall. Rough estimate on that is 5000 bucks, And I got an appointment with Mike Tanner from Tanner Electric on September 9th for an estimate mm -hmm. to come in and tell us. And Mike Tanner was given to us by, uh, by RV Technologies as a person that does network rewiring. Mm -hmm. uh, at the meeting last Monday, uh, Wayne and I were there. Skip Lindsay could not be there. Uh, I went in there with about two and a half pages of questions, and every one of those questions were answered in their presentation. They did a very, very thorough job, and mm. for the second time in meeting them, I'm impressed with, with their knowledge and what they're doing. I think they're, uh, I think they, I think they got their act together. However, looks to be succeeding. I've asked them for three references when they return the uh, updated proposal. Three references from towns that they are working with. And he says they will do that. Mm -hmm. Did he come to me? No, one of the things that he mentioned was that municipalities were the greatest, at the greatest risk for hackers mm -hmm. because we've got good insurance, apparently. You've got oh. good insurance mm -hmm. for um, IT. Deep issues. pockets. <laughs> and because you've got good insurance, that makes it a great target for mm -hmm. people for trying to take their insurance mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. Good point. Uh, if we were going with RV Technologies, if we did get hot, hot, hot. <laughs> we'd have to hawk the camera. Yeah. If we did get hacked, uh, because of the backup scheme in place, you basically say this to the, 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 the hackers or the hijackers, mm -hmm. you wipe the systems clean and reload it. Mm -hmm. You have to find out how you got hacked. And typically the way you get hacked, even with all this stuff in place, is somebody unintentionally clicks on the link that they shouldn't mm -hmm. have, have clicked on. What I got out of watching 2020 last night, they were talking about three large corporations that got hacked, and every single one of them was someone that received something, you know, a document, an email, or something, and clicked on it, and didn't realize that they shouldn't mm -hmm. be clicking on it. Mm -hmm. And that stuff does sneak yeah, through. Yeah. So that stuff, all that stuff I just gave, it comes out to be about $1,700 in, in, in one time charges. And I asked RV Technology, I said, okay, it's going to take us six months to a year to get this stuff done. They said, nope, as soon as we do, we go ahead and order the equipment. And they can actually, even though the network's not in place, they can go replace the dumb equipment in the clerk's office with mm -hmm. smart equipment, and you've been taking this over. Mm -hmm. We need sheetrock, too. Yes. Did he I talk to you about it? plywood. Oh, plywood. We need two 4 by 8 sheets of 5 inch of plywood on that south wall. So no sheetrock on that wall? No, just plywood. No, it's on the other one. side of the wall that you want the sheetrock on. Oh, okay. So there's the, room, <laughs> the back, the inside. Oh, okay. The so room the, needs sheetrock. The back side of that wall where the equipment's going to go needs plywood so you can screw and anchor stuff. Oh, okay. Through. So the sheetrock doesn't have to. Okay. Skip, you sure. said seventeen hundred dollars. Did you mean seventeen thousand dollars? I wish I meant seventeen hundred. Thank you. Seventeen thousand four hundred and forty-three dollars mm -hmm. is what I got here. But again, this is—you know—it's moving. It's moving. 
This is all the, the just start up. For, one time get us all, get us all up to date. And that puts us in a position to basically move forward for the next ten for the next ten years. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, mm -hmm. worst case, next five years, unless technology takes such a rapid change. Mm -hmm. uh, and it get, gets you out of the situation where the knowledge is in my head. Mm -hmm. So if something does happen to me, I'm not asking for something to happen to me. If something does. The town is protected. And Wayne is trying to pick up stuff as fast as you can. But he's a Linux guy. <laughs> Not a Windows guy. But he still knows computers. He's a little younger than you, maybe. What? He's a little younger than you, maybe. I think he's a whole lot younger than you. <laughs> and then one of the bigger ones is the security systems that, that just don't retain. Yeah, and they end up quitting on us. The cameras at the office and at the room. That's, not, that's um, not even on this list, but. They gave me the name of a company and I forgot to write it down for most your readers or something. Not no, I, I, I'll get it again. Basically, mm -hmm. fix that. It means replace it just there, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, another important point that I was going to make right out of my head. He was also talking about, Ruben was also talking about um, they had a, a front end for, for spam to eliminate those from even coming in. It's not foolproof, but it would reduce yeah. some of what, what you see in the time of clerk's office. So essentially, until we have um, that new proposal from them, there's no action. By no, this is just so we avoid total slicker shock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Skip, thank you, first of all, for all your time on this. It sounds like you've spent quite a bit of time researching these costs. Um, and I'm curious, like, are there a lot of other companies similar to RB where it would make sense to be kind of price shopping, or are they kind of a one-of-a-kind company? Companies like this are one-of-a-kind. Uh, we've had experience. What was the one we had experience with? Worms bees. Worms bees, mm -hmm. and they... Mm. They were, they weren't worth, they were supposed to be coming in here once a month and checking on things. And the guy would walk in the door or walk around and ask if there's any problems and walk out and we were paying him 350 bucks. Um, yeah. Okay. Mm. Uh, are there others? Probably. Are there others that are that local and have that type of facility? I doubt it. That's why I'm asking for references. Mm -hmm. And the, to put this in perspective, if you were paying me, you'd be paying me more than $770 a month. Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe the one time cost would be. Uh, you know, and what would say if I, we were paying you? You're paying me. You're paying me more than seven hundred seventy dollars. Okay. I, when I was working as not a to mention all the last three or four years or five years worth. <laughs> so that we haven't paid you. Yeah. No, you haven't paid me at all, and I don't <laughs> want to be paid. And, and people have said we want to pay you, and I said no because I want to mm -hmm. walk away and not feel that I'm obligated to. To hang in here and, and support them. I can't do the work anymore. Uh, when I was consulting, I was getting anywhere from 250 to 500 bucks an hour. So you can see where that 770 bucks a month would get eaten up real quick. I've got, I don't, I, I've got probably 20 hours in the library this week. Uh, and and Dee Dee's getting the bill. I'll get you some more. Wait, no, that's it. 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 That's I think it is. Oh, what's not in those numbers is the copier, printer, which has got to be replaced come December anyway. And RB Technologies threw a curve into that because they will not let us scan directly from that copier, which is very insecure, to a PC. We have to scan to an intermediate medium. I'm talking with uh, the copier company and saying, does the copier have an internal drive that we can scan to? He's supposed to get back to me. So, you know, that's we're all trying to get that straight. Mm. Other questions? Thanks for doing it. Mm. So we didn't put in any extra in, add to what was already budgeted, approved budget, because there was that surplus. You thought would cover it. Because, and also the Lister's education, which is not um, 
needed for Lister's education that can be used on software. Oh. It's almost ten thousand dollars. Oh no. Okay. A little over ten thousand. Um, yeah. Mm. Any other questions from the board? Any other? No. Any other questions in general? None that would sound smart. <laughs> no, go ahead. I'll let that stop. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank mm. you. Yeah. There's no objection. Maybe we will move on to the next um, agenda item, which is the, the firehouse and we missed it last month. Yeah, that's, it seems like we've got pretty good progress over there. Yeah, so... Good night, gentlemen. Good night. Thank our, you. our goings on, we'll start with, with FEMA. That's just been an ongoing nightmare for us. Um, they rejected our um, outdoor cleanup work. What? $20,000 they're not going to pay us. They said we weren't eligible because we didn't pay anybody after I spent all the time working on it saying... Saying, uh, so if we had paid someone to clean up the yard, they would have covered it since it was volunteer. But then they but then they made you keep track of all the volunteers. Yeah, well, I told FEMA to shove it when they came this last one. Okay. I told well, them I can clean up the yard without filling out your paperwork. <laughs> you have something to add. Go ahead, Skip. <laughs> well, yeah, for all the volunteers that have been done at the yeah. town offices, yeah. FEMA isn't reimbursing us for that. Really? So I'm really surprised that they're not doing it. I'm interested in that. Yeah. Plus, I got a new FEMA guy. Mm. Two new FEMA guys and a new guy from the state. That was this last week. So yeah, there were some pretty ugly meetings because I was not really happy about that. And then I basically ghosted them for a month because I just wasn't. Like they were sending me meeting requests. I'm just ignoring them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just we could. We've always taken care of each other in the town anyway. We're going to clean up the mess. I just don't need to fill out hundreds mm -hmm. of hours of paperwork and attend a bunch of useless meetings to not get paid. I just, mm -hmm. do, do you have the hours? How many hours? I do have it all. It's it's uh, just shy nineteen grand. It's in their thing, and I just had to. They forced me to sign off and <laughs> say we closed it out last mm -hmm. week because somebody from Washington says that since they were re I don't understand it. The reimbursement rate's a hundred percent, but since there was no monetary value mm -hmm. in the beginning. Well, the risk is it's donated labor, so they, yeah. they turn that donated labor to, I think, $28.40. That's, that's what we got mm -hmm. yeah. 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 That's what I heard all the way through the process, yeah. and then back in June, they started it. Well, who's your PDMG? I, I, well, uh, we have a new person. I don't know. I was supposed to meet them next week because <laughs> uh, Terry's gone. I know he's gone. And then the, uh, Chase Gehrman, who was with the state, he's gone, so i got to do somebody. So I'll let you know after next week, maybe I'll get to meet with them. Frustrated, if you could tell. Yeah. Down and <laughs> and, and really, they asked me after the last flood if I was going to work with them on a bunch of things. I told them, no, I've got better things to do with my time. You can go find your own stuff. <laughs> I just, you know, I don't get you blame. Yeah. I just, yeah, yeah uh, we've got enough to do without without that. So we're still in work. We got $3,900 for the fire responses last summer. And the firehouse is still wending its way through the process. I think we just closed out recovery and we're supposed to move into mitigation. I don't know what that looks like because um, every time they would describe what that looks like, because what I would try to do is respond back to them and say, okay, my understanding of what you just said is this, no, that's not it. I said, okay, well, Try again, and they tell me again, and I'd respond back and say, okay, "This is my understanding of what you just said." No, that's not it. That's wrong. I'm like, mm -hmm. so I, I don't know. Just su supposedly mm -hmm. we'll get something, but I don't know what that is. What do you mean? So, so the the discrepancy is what we got for insurance compared to what it's going to cost to actually put the sure. building back. Um, and they didn't want to pay the same, let's use the rough numbers, the $25,000 difference, which is what they thought they owed me. Um, but they said they don't pay that. But they said if I got new estimates and made the number bigger, that they would pay that. Does that make any sense to anybody? Oh, goodness sake. So well, it kind of does. We made the number bigger. It does. Yeah, and then they closed it and moved us into mitigation. And somehow, in FEMA math, that's going to make some money appear somewhere. And there's some trigger love I, level of. I, I, don't, I, I don't understand it. Yeah, I just really, I honestly don't understand yeah. it. It's really frustrating. Yeah. And the more they explain it, the less 
they seem to understand oh. it. Mm. So I'm supposed to meet with the new, what's a PDMG, PDMG. they call them PDMG. Program delivery manager. Yeah, so we get a new person. See, so you meeting him face to face? On the well, I don't, I got to go, I got an email today, I didn't get it, I was in Burlington with the apartment house fire all day, so I got to deal with, what you look at the email, I don't know. Because we do Zoom. Yeah, that's what we've been doing, yeah. is either a phone call or a Zoom, so. Um, I may invite you in at some point so we can have the conversation about, as, as I said, I'm still mm. confused about the, mm. the yeah, labor. I, I just, mm. but they hammered me pretty hard. I think there was 11 people in one of the meetings. Don't you love that? Mm. And they were all just, rrr, rrr, rrr. and I'm like, I find you guys don't even know what you're supposed to, well, it's unfortunate that people early on in the process told you that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I even heard, I don't know if it's factual, but they built the new firehouse in Cabot and the town paid for it and LP was telling them they're not paying for it. Oh, you're kidding That's me. That's what one of their selectmen oh told me. Oh my goodness. Did they have to move it or something? <laughs> well, that, leaving that aside, they said go ahead and build it and build it as an emergency. I think the town went and borrowed the money, built the temporary yeah. building, and now FEMA's was like, yeah, sorry, I don't know who told you that, but we're not paying. Oh that was from one God. of their selectmen, so <clears throat> one yeah. of the five million dollars. So I don't know that for a no. fact, but so we're not the only ones. I think what's going on with FEMA is they're they made a lot of promises, they're running out of money, yeah. and they're finding ways to not pay. We didn't go through this in 11 when, with Irene, they paid everything. They paid mm -hmm. stuff they're claiming mm -hmm. not to pay right now, so it's just extremely frustrating. Mm -hmm. It's hard enough to do all this work without having to fill out a bunch of unnecessary forms and attend mm -hmm. the unnecessary meetings. So I really I just told her the mm -hmm. buzz office last mm -hmm. time, can you help us? No. no. <laughs> but that's what that's about, not in a mm -hmm. bitter way. It's just I got better things. For, I, I don't want to waste mm -hmm. volunteer people's time. It's not like they're going to get paid. Right, they, right. So it's like, I didn't mind dollars. doing it if there was an outlet. Because again, we would have cleaned it up anyway. It's just if we could recover some funds, mm -hmm. then that would be the way to go. It wasn't like we were trying to get something. I don't understand why you can't recover those funds. That's wrong. Yeah. Where we're told you that. Yeah, somebody from Washington. It's always a faceless bureaucrat. That the, That's wrong. The, you never mm -hmm. get to talk to that person. But we'll have it. We, we, we'll chat when I get to talk to the uh, new PDNG person. Did you get any damages this year? So last flood, it, it, it came across and went in the building about yay deep. Didn't, we had moved everything off the apparatus oh. floor, so oh, nothing okay. got damaged this okay. time. Um, and then it, it receded, mm -hmm. I think, I think a big slug. We were there, someone was there at midnight, someone was there at one mm -hmm. o'clock. Mm -hmm. Somewhere between two and three o'clock, a big slug of water came through and was mm -hmm. over a foot over the culvert. Mm -hmm. This is just this most recent? This last uh, yeah. two mm -hmm. month ago, whatever it was, yeah. it washed. July 10th. washed around mm -hmm. toward our new driveway, mm -hmm. about where that job trail is. It kind of went down mm -hmm. through, I think it's Gravels, a little in the yellow house. Mm -hmm. Kind of washed their driveway out and it got them mm -hmm. pretty good. Mm -hmm. And we had a big mess in front of the fire. We cleaned it up the next day. Mm -hmm. Within a few days, it was okay. Construct so construction seems to be moving along over there. Yeah, so we're doing good on the construction. Um, it's a little bit delayed because we've had such wonderful weather. Mm -hmm. I know the slab getting poured was about two weeks late because you can't really risk a slab in the rain. Um, I, I want to say they're two to three weeks behind where we were hoping to be, but the weather again, it rained on them today, but their, their idea was to hopefully get that roof uh, covered in with the, uh, with the uh, uh, roofing with the tape on it by the end of the week. We'll see if they get that far. So the, the, is that the addition on the south end? No, that's all, that's, I'll move on to USDA okay, next. That's sorry. a whole other okay. animal. <laughs> if I have less hair, you know why I'm dealing with so yeah, that's all going good. Uh, they've been, that's what I, I guess, as much as we can keep in the process. That was a little more work for me because we didn't pay for full construction services, so I'm having to do uh, submittals and approvals. And, so that is the USDA team? No, that's next summer, I hope. The whole USDA thing is not even on the table right now with construction. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'll get, so keep we, any questions on the building and then, because the building's moving along good. There's no hiccups, no major hiccups. Um, so USDA, we've, after trying all summer, I've got an architect hired who's supposed to do the uh, uh, schematic, whoops, schematic design and the opinion of probable cost. I've got a fire protection engineer hired because we have to put in a, a sprinkler system, which is going to be kind of expensive. And I've hired the, uh, just last week, finally got the contract for uh, Stone Environmental doing our environmental study, which is, it was in, Again, federal thing, it really frustrated because mm. you, you'd say, well, what does Stone Environmental need to do? Because that would be a question I'd get from their people. Mm. They couldn't answer the question. Because <laughs> what I didn't want to do is we don't have a ton of money, 
all, all the money we're spending up front is, is included in our match, so it's not wasting money, but I don't have money to waste if that makes sense. I don't have, mm -hmm. I can't, I don't try again. My fear with the federal stuff is like FEMA, they, oh, that's not it, and you pay someone to do it again. That's what kind of getting with FEMA. You just do this and you go mm -hmm. do it, and they say, well, that's not really what we were looking for. So I think we nailed that down. But So the environmental study has, is happening this month into September. Uh, the architect is supposed to have his work done before September, at which point we'll be able to finish filling out the USDA paperwork <laughs> to apply for the money that mm -hmm. the Congress has given us. What it's going to build is a 2,000 square foot addition to the south side. We'll dig that bank out. We'll bury a 20,000 gallon water tank. It'll pay for the sprinkler system. So, so we got to see, if, you know, if in real money that's mm -hmm. actually going to do it. Mm -hmm. and we'll have to make adjustments to the project because we can't mm -hmm. spend more. Mm -hmm. They're going to give us. We also have to have a match. So whatever we're matching, we got to have enough to. Basically, at the beginning of the project, we sure we have enough money. So mm -hmm. we're still on track for USDA. If we can get it in this fall to get, uh, once it's, they approve it, which could take up to 45 days, and we have to go into the design phase, which then we would hope to be out to bid by January, late winter, late, late fall, early winter, somewhere in that neighborhood, mm -hmm. to hope to try to get to next mm -hmm. uh, spring for construction. Because we just got to finish getting out of there. We just keep mm -hmm. flooding. I don't know the world maybe it'll change by or no it's not it's not looking promising because <laughs> we were you know we all went through the stress again this past week uh, of saying we need to move everything out of the building again and mm. this time it was the wind damage that got everybody mm. um, so that's you, USDA so we're still in process I, I'm not in really control of that because we've had to hire the, the architects somebody who's familiar with getting their way through USDA and I'm, we're going to end up hiring them at the other end for full architectural services because they'll have to do all that paperwork to keep USDA happy. Mm -hmm. That's the downside to grants, mm -hmm. is the, the grant submittals. You know, they mm -hmm. have pretty strict requirements. So. Mm -hmm. so where's your septic compared to where you were going to put this addition on? So if you face the building, uh, the septic's on the, on the left between the, uh, where the town land is and our building. There used to be four stakes sticking up. I don't know if they're still there. And where's the addition going to be? To the south side. There's a big pile of dirt there right now. It's going to all be dug out, so that will be the most expensive. Well, the sprinkler will be the most expensive part of the project. But. Mm. Yeah, it but, but looks like there's not enough room there. Yeah, there is. We, we scaled it out, and it's going to take there's a lot of dirt. There's yeah. probably another 40 grand mm. worth of dirt to dig out of there. Yeah. And there's ledge. We're going to get into ledge this time because mm. there's ledge there. Mm. Um, but they think they can mm. pull it apart with their little cherry picker. I don't know what they call them on an excavator. <laughs> break the ledge apart. Mm. But it's all kind of like we'll see. Mm. You know, we got to see if before the prices come in, mm. that they have mm. to uh, make adjustments based on. What, what, what and that would allow you to have like a bigger, like a meeting room? Or yeah, something? so there'll be a meeting room, a storage room, which will get rid of all being in multiple buildings, and we'll have two more bays to park the vehicles in. So really? That big? Every, oh. yeah, it's it's uh, 2,000 mm -hmm. square feet, so wow. it's enough, it gets us all under one roof, oh. which has been our goal Great. right along. So it's good. We'll, mm -hmm. pay for, we'll end up as a town paying for half the building, essentially. Mm -hmm. The feds will pay for the other half, which is great, but mm -hmm. we're going to get there. Mm -hmm. And I'm just having to be patient because if you're like me, I like to see things get done and having to kind of wait for <laughs> someone else to do it. You call them up and they don't return your phone call and you wait and wait and wait and then they finally return your phone call and then they'll have it next week, but it's not that you get the drill. That's kind of what we're going through. So if you got any questions, ask, feel free to call me and I'll give you the best answer I have today. As far as FEMA, I wouldn't hold my breath waiting for it. Have you got any money from FEMA? Oh yeah, we got like $6,000 this week. Woo! Yeah, Man. really. <laughs> <laughs> and you're already spending new money this year, I think. <laughs> um, yeah. And that's FEMA. And then the buyout is still moving its way through. So uh, John, who's not here today, Gordon said that he emailed them because they were sending out notices for new properties for buyouts. And we were concerned oh. that well, what happened to the old properties that we haven't done anything with. And they said, oh, the email we got back essentially said that there's more money coming through the system. and. We're on the top of the list for that, so that'll be something we'll have to address if mm -hmm. and when. I wouldn't, again, wouldn't hold my breath because um, I got in a bit of a dust off with the uh, Deputy Commissioner of Public Safety who was at our mutual aid meeting a couple weeks ago because mm -hmm. they were so proud of themselves for sitting on $90 million for mitigation stuff like ours, and they have been sitting on it for a year. And there's a lot of fire departments sitting there. Uh. So 
Yeah. Are you a right. bank? Yeah. yeah. You know, there's a lot of needs that you aren't being paid. You guys are sitting on $90 million, so. Why? They can't come up with a program or I enough forms or something? Who knows? Or? <laughs> I don't know. I just don't oh. know. It's frustrating. Wow. Oh. Because, like, you look at, you know, I was in Plainfield for the hazmat team watching the mess they're going through. Oh, God. And, yeah. you know, they're, they're FEMA's, FEMA's there telling them, hey, come to us. We're going to save the day. And I'm like, I know with a couple of select board members that said, you need to be ready to, to, to eat this by yourself for a while. Because you're right, maybe not missing the boat here by much. And private mm. homeowners are suffering and they oh, think people yeah. are going to come in and save the day. It's really not going to happen. Mm. Mm. There's not a lot of money. So that I told people, told the fire department mm. guys, I said, just just take care of your stuff and keep track of it. But I wouldn't, wouldn't, mm. wouldn't depend on this. So. Mm. Mm. Wow. Thanks, Any Bob. questions? I don't want to bore you. But mm. In call volume, we're, we're, uh, uh, what's amazing to me is we're as high as we were last year, but didn't have the influx of emergencies during the flooding. So we're equal to what we had last year at this oh. time. So mm. that's telling me we're we're busier than last year already mm. without, without the major flood. Oh. So the drug side of it has been fairly tame. Uh, it's just oh. been a lot of other stuff. Mm. You name it, we've probably been to it in the last mm. couple months. So. There's yeah. a lot of need for particularly emergency medical services. And we mm. did have to go deal with that treat the other day. We stole a couple of your road signs and didn't yeah. pick them up. Yeah. Well, I couldn't find out. Well, I didn't know it was an entire maple tree over the road. It's, it's not safe. So I called Hydric Electric and we went up and uh, it was shortly after you had called. Uh -huh. Someone else called in. They, they paged us out and uh, they couldn't give me an ETA. So we just stuck a couple signs up and said, there, if someone wants to drive through, they can do it themselves. And we've done mm. something to... Mm. to uh, make it okay and you're okay with scrapping those like I just said just, just to get it because I don't need to we don't want to have to sit and babysit power lines mm -hmm. with volunteers for sometimes eight to twenty four hours oh, just geez. ridiculous so. Mm -hmm. so that's what happened the other day. I assume they must have cleaned it up. Yeah. You guys were out this morning, right? Did they yeah. leave you yes. a <laughs> Wasn't bad. Okay, yeah. Well, they did yeah. pretty well. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't realize it was a great big tree. I was like, oh boy, if that falls yeah. on somebody. We brought the loader just because we didn't know what to expect. Yeah. But yeah. loader and chainsaw. Because I would have done it at 6 that morning. Kelsey called me and then he said, it was just a branch. I'm like, that's more a branch if that tree yeah. could kill somebody. Yeah. And you don't want anybody touching mm -hmm. it because I think that's 7200 up there and that could kill somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if somebody wanders up and touches the tree that's on it, that could get you. That's so, not the one on, on Cabot Road that Brandy was talking about, I hope. Wheeler. Be. Wheeler Hill. No, this was right no, on Hill. <laughs> she was talking about one on Cabot Road. There's a dead tree down. Well, it's probably on the phone lines. On there's the, a section the there. There's no line. power lines. Yeah. Oh, that was, that's what from she like said. Uh, Danny's house. Yeah, but it's this side of Dan's house. There was power lines. Oh, it there. was. Okay. All right. But it, it is a, a telephone line, but there was power lines. Too okay. There. Yeah, because in the middle there, there's a section with no power mm -hmm. lines, and then oh. I see stuff hanging there. We have to be careful because they'll, they're more than happy to have us sit and babysit these lines. We're having to kind of push back with state police. We're having to kind of push back with utilities. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, just let the fire department sit there. And I said, it's oh, one thing if you're paying the guys gee. to sit there, but mm -hmm. they even had Comcast wanting us to sit and babysit oh. their power, their cable line. I said, a thousand bucks an hour. Yeah, really. Mm -hmm. We'll send someone up. I said, or I can cut mm -hmm. the thing out of the way and throw it. No, no, don't do that. Mm -hmm. So we're having to push oh. back a little bit. <laughs> we're having accidents where it takes forever for the police to get there. So I'm hoping mm -hmm. to meet with the lieutenant at some point because it's mm -hmm. having our guys sit around mm. that's why you're probably going to find more often than not if the car's off the fog line we're going to leave it um, but we get stuck with them that are stuck in the travel lane and sometimes we're there for two hours waiting for mm. you know, exposing people so i hope mm. we can address that because you see the shift from the state to just keep shifting duties into the municipal mm. section sure. here it means volunteers end up doing it yeah same sort of things happening. Part of your call volume increases. Mm -hmm. The same things happening in, in the medical side. People that really ought not to be at home or home, and they're depending more on local emergency services. Mm -hmm. So it's going to drive your costs up. It's just mm -hmm. how it is. Mm -hmm. There's lots of people getting to be older. They're not 60 yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Paul. All right. Have a great day. Yeah. Question for you. Yeah, go for it. By any chance, do you have any of the folding tables out in the town hall? I can look. Are you missing some? Okay, the ones that fold in half? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll look if you have any of them. See, someone might have grabbed one before a train might be in there. If okay. it is, I'll just stick it back in. Thank you. Two. two. All right, yeah. thank you. Have yeah. a good night, everybody. You too. Good night. All right, bye-bye. Michael. Okay, so um, these are for you guys. I, I did send this to everybody. Um, 
individually a couple, three weeks ago. But, um, so there's another program um, that might be used to um, help different people uh, with uh, the flooding issues. And this would be only for this year, uh, not for last year. It's called the Emergency Watershed Protection Program. Dr. Brian Boyd, uh, a little bit about this um, uh, last week, um, and it's, it's a funding from the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Natural Resources Conservation Service, um, and it's a program for both municipalities and private landowners for um, uh, protection work, um, mediation work uh, from mostly from flooding. Um, we cover like debris clogged waterways, unstable stream banks, severe erosion, jeopardizing public infrastructure, etc. Um, and um, it's a, it's a, again, it is a, a federal program, so there would be um, kind of a 75%, 25% um, uh, match in, in funding. Um, and there are a number of different steps for it. The, First step is that um, um, you know private landowners or the town um, we would need to have designate somebody as a sponsor, and I'm thinking of the town and the select board as a sponsor. And some of the things that I have been thinking of are the folks that came here at the last meeting from um, Woodbury Lake with their erosion problems, um, there's Ron Ratburn's perennial problem with Buck Lake Brook. There's the bank along the Cabot Road. Um, there's the bridge on Corkscrew Road that now needs to be repaired um, that may or may not be a town responsibility. Um, and then there, there is a, uh, a landowner, um, homeowner up on East Hill whose property um, is slowly getting eroded away with the different flooding events and getting closer and closer to their house. Um, so different things like that. <coughs> How about the, the lady with the yellow cape? Yes. On yeah, that's place. another one. Oh, you know, the thing, um, yeah, I think there is, yes, that is another one that would be a possibility. Um, so what happens with this is that there's a, a particular uh, steps um, that would happen. Um, first of all, we would have to um, designate a sponsor, um, um, and which could be the town. And then we have to submit uh, a request um, for the, this assistance within 60 days of the watershed event. So it would be July 10th, 11th of this year. So we have till September, the middle of mm -hmm. September 10th. And it would just be a request. Um, and then what we would do on our end, and I'm, when I say we, I mean myself, um, as the Planning Commission Chair, um, we would kind of publicly notice that this is a possibility and see if there are other people in town that might be affected in some way and they could let uh, me know. Um, I would create a list and then we would submit that to um, the um, Natural Resources Conservation Service. They would eventually have someone come and do a site visit to all of the things that are listed and they would choose which ones are um, ones that they would be willing to deal with. So mm -hmm. it wouldn't be up to the town to make that choice, which would be good, I think. Um, and then um, what would happen from there is there would be design work that, um, mm -hmm. according to Brian, would be 100% paid for, any kind of engineering work to resolve mm -hmm. or mitigate the problem. And then the implementation, um, there would be funding for 75% of that and then um, the match would be 25%. So if it was a private landowner that was benefiting, they would have to come up with a 25%, unless the town wanted to pay for that. Mm -hmm. And any of the town um, issues that we have, um, it would be up to the town to pay those, that 25%. Um, so Michael, how, as a member of the Planning Commission, how would you advertise that to Front porch forum, forum is probably forum. about the only real yep. thing that would work. And maybe mm -hmm. we could talk about it more at uh, uh, another select board meeting. Um, we could come up with perhaps town projects 
yeah. to the next slip we're being. You know, like I can kind of consider Ron Rathbun's problem a town problem. But well, is there is there any plan or solution or design or anything that would affect his problem? Well, that's what the if it's chosen, that's I mean, what the engineers would come up with. Yeah. Do you think that? Do you think you'd have to have some kind of a an idea? I mean, is well, that would, you know, the person doing the site visit would have an idea. Mm -hmm. um, it's not going to be up to me or anybody else mm -hmm. in town to make that decision. It would mm -hmm. be um, the person from the NRCS um, that would decide that, and then, um, and then there would, you know, I'm sure that there are some engineers that have some ideas of how to solve that problem. I know when we had the site visit for Buck Lake Brook um, after the flooding. From last year in December, um, you know, we had when we had a bunch of state guys mm -hmm. here, VTrans, um, uh, Skip, and Alfie were also there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we were looking at Buck Lake Brook as it does its final drop into the village, mm -hmm. and looking at the banks, and, and they were throwing back ideas, back and forth ideas about what could we do to to stabilize that bank. Um, so these are the kinds of things mm -hmm. that the engineers would come up with, mm -hmm. um, and then, um, mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's a municipal thing, we could decide whether or not, okay, that makes sense, mm -hmm. let's give it a try. Um, and it would be up to the private landowner if there was a site mm -hmm. chosen to decide whether or not um, they thought that the engineering would work. And, um, mm -hmm. and the one on East Hill? The one on East Hill. East Hill. Um, well, that one—that's a private landowner. So, if the NRCS decided, it, yes, this is um, a site that we would be willing to um, help fund, then there would be engineering for that too. Mm -hmm. And the homeowner pays twenty-five percent. They would have to pay twenty. They would be hundred percent would pay for the engineering design work, and then if the implementation of you know public design work, mm -hmm. that would be uh, covered. Um, at 75 percent, and then it would be up to the landowner to cover the 25 percent. So does it make sense for our next meeting to have a longer um, portion of the agenda dedicated to this program to identify sure. possible town projects? And, or, or do you need anything else from the select board in terms of this? No, um, that would be, uh, um, I could, we could get out the word and perhaps I would have a longer list of town projects by then. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, we could also uh, maybe have Brian Voigt come who could talk a little bit more knowledgeably about the program. Um, yeah, that would be, that would be um, a way to go, I think. Yeah. Seems like it. Yeah, we have time. We should, we have we should move forward. Tenth, and yeah. you know, even if we submit a letter saying that we would like to do this, and then we decide not to, there's no, um, there's no obligation until mm -hmm. uh, the site visits happen and the uh, engineering starts. Yeah, so in the in the cover sheet here, uh, sponsors' obligations are. Providing land rights to implement repair work, securing all necessary permits, furnishing the local cost share, that would be for the municipal um, projects, accomplishing required works of improvement to remove the imminent threat to life and property, and then performing any necessary operation and maintenance into the future once the work, implementation work is done. I just want to see what you got in your package there, because I got two of these pages and I'm not sure whether I'm missing it. I think you just got an extra page. Oh, okay, because you yeah. got two pages of writing and one page of the handout. Okay. Oh, okay. And then you had somebody probably has one less page. You missing one? Uh, no. I have page two, and then I have. Did okay. you just have a back? Two more. Three. Yeah. yeah. Three. You have just three pages. I do. I have okay. three also. All okay, right. You should have three pages. And Michael, it sounds like there's a like a template, a letter template to request for assistance that if yes. and does the homeowner the private landowner submit that or does the town submit it for them? I think the town would as the sponsor would submit that. Okay. Yeah. Right. So we would have a listing. I mean I haven't looked at that form mm -hmm. yet. Um, but um, yeah. I assume that that's what would happen. We would have a listing of all mm -hmm. the different sites. <clears throat>
This sounds like a really positive. Like yeah, really, it could be. Yeah, it could be. It's hard to say sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks for investigating it. And if you know it, and it wouldn't be like a three or five year time frame. I think we're going to be a little bit quicker mm -hmm. to yeah. try to do this. Also. All right, so okay. we'll have that on the next. So we'll have it on the next agenda. Yeah. And I will try to, um, I'll put a thing on front porch forum and try to get the word out and see if there are any other responses that I get. Mm. All right. Must reduce threat to life and property. Be economically, environmentally, and socially defensible. And be yeah, technically be sound. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gonna get a lot of respect. We'll we'll let the NRC people decide if it meets those criteria. <laughs> Absolutely. One, one of the things that is a little questioning, troublesome to me is that the says the emergency watershed program cannot be used to repair damaged property, rebuild, destroyed property. Um, the others I sort of understand, but you know, like with the bridge uh, on Corkscrew Road. Um, Technically, I guess it's not destroyed yet, um, but it is damaged. Mm. Um, so that's strange. Yeah. It's worth it's worth applying, having them say no. Yeah. So that right. would that exactly. would take a, that. Um, and maybe maybe that wouldn't apply. So that's it's kind of fuzzy gray stuff, right? and it would be the site visit person that would determine mm. that. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I would, we would def I would definitely let everybody know mm -hmm. that this your site may not be approved. Just so that. Mm -hmm. uh, Set. All right. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Alfred. Okay. Okay. So we got. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. You know, You're I up. put this on the uh, on here for the library board trustees. I didn't really expect anybody to show up, but she did show up, and she's been sitting here. Yeah. Do you I'm want to say? To. And I've also <laughs> learned a lot. And I appreciate all of the work okay. you guys well, um, I wasn't sure stay. if I had to or not because I'm okay. still so new. Well, if and you want to stay, you, if you want to stay, you um, can stay. And if, we can do if the... I don't have to, I'll probably go check on dinner. Okay, mm -hmm. so... Are you jealous? Or we can <laughs> do the so appointment right now. talk about that now? Sure, if that's okay with these guys. Sure. Yeah. Won't take long. Okay. So you've got some responses to your yeah, search? Yes, so I don't have much to say. Um, these two women like Sarah Van Hoff has um, agreed to help out. Mm -hmm. So right now we have a full board. So that's that's great news. Um, feels better going forward with five yeah. five good people. So we need to appoint uh, August and Khaki. Yep. So mm -hmm. and that's the good news. The bad news is a lot of these people also don't want to do this long term. So March at town meeting, yeah. I just hope a lot of people come forward and, yeah. and want to mm -hmm. pitch in. It's a great, yeah. it's, it's a great library and great board. Mm -hmm. okay. so that's all I have to glad say. Glad you like it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you want to go ahead and do? I, I guess I could just make a motion that we appoint uh, Kathy Peltz and August Elliott to the library board of trustees. Is and they can stay as long as they want. <laughs> yeah, maybe they'll want to stay yeah. beyond March. They might like yeah. it. <laughs> Sarah and August have already served. Her, we appointed her last time. Sarah and August mm -hmm. have been on the board for at least one term before. Yeah. No mm -hmm. more. But they're helping out. Mm -hmm. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of appointing Keck Peltz and August Elliott to the library board, please say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Back to the road commissioner's report. Looks like we're talking about class four roads. And then well, those are just things that I put on there. He, he can give his report and then got it. those are just prompts for me. Okay. <laughs> so we put a lot of the large culverts in since we last spoke. Whoa. Yep. Two uh, four footers and two three footers are all in place, and so far they're working great. Good. So, where, where were they on um, county roads? Uh, there was two on East Hill Road, two four footers on East Hill. These are ones that have caused the large portion of East Hill's mm -hmm. washouts. Mm -hmm. So uh, presumably that won't happen again. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we put the four footer on the county road extension, which was part of last year's FEMA okay. project. So that's complete. Did they want, is that where they wanted a more than four foot one? Yeah, mm -hmm. they wanted, well, they wanted a 54 inch oh. barrier foot. Oh. So they got a four footer. Yeah. Yeah. Six inches with that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's close to what they ran. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that that's that's done. I'm putting I'm closing Cabot Road on Wednesday to put another another three footer. Uh, it's another spot that is chronically flooded. Mm -hmm. so you're replacing an 18 inch. And replacing an 18 inch yep. to a three footer. Uh, just so that that doesn't happen again. It's, it's, it's a brook that kind of comes down off. I don't know if it's a year-round brook or not, but there's, you know, when it rains, mm -hmm. it's really mm -hmm. boring. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to change that out on Wednesday. I've contacted the quarry mm -hmm. and the other company that is hauling out of there just to give them a heads up and say, you're not going to get through. So I'm going to leave it open until like 11. And that's when I'm going to close it. I think I can okay. get it done, mm -hmm. open back up before time to go home, uh, starting at 11. So that's the plan for that. Um, uh, just haven't really had much time for grading because I've had a, had one, it's rains every other day, and two, mm -hmm. my manpower has been taken up by these big culverts because mm -hmm. it really takes mm -hmm. three people to be there for those. Mm -hmm. um, I stepped out a second, but do you, you still have the big machine? Did you already talk about that? Still have the big machine. Yeah. Uh, I think I've got either one or two weeks left with that. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm going to move that to Cabot Road and uh, use it for that. That three mm -hmm. foot cover. And then I wanted to talk about the rail trail mm -hmm. um, because that's another one that's closed officially right now. Um, still need to get to uh, Nichols, Nichols Ledge Road. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't gotten there yet. Um, How bad is that compared to? Last time, <coughs> not anywhere near close. Yeah, but no. it's still not passable. It's not passable to mm -hmm. a car, mm -hmm. uh, four wheeler, motorbike, mm -hmm. probably could get through it, but um, certainly not a car. But it's not going to take anywhere near what it did last year. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not as as deep. It's not as, mm -hmm. as wide. And is that a culvert that washed out as well? <laughs> uh, last year it was a culvert that got overtaken and. Um, flooded the whole the whole road out. Mm -hmm. This year it was it did get overtaken. We upsized it a little bit. Obviously not enough, mm -hmm. um, but it didn't wash near as bad. Mm -hmm. uh, we ended up putting a two foot culvert in there, mm -hmm. and clearly it probably should have been a three footer. Mm -hmm. And do you have a three foot to replace it with, or is it not worth? I don't. I'll have to do that. I'm yeah. thinking I'll do that in another. In another budget yep. mm -hmm. or another okay. time, uh, just because it's most storms that two footer is taken mm -hmm. care of. It, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, so I'm sort of thinking that's where that's that's where I'm headed is to those smaller roads now to at least get them passable. Um, um, old Quarry Road. That's on their list. Okay. Yeah, that and I think I can do most of that with what gravel's there and just run the grader up it mm -hmm. and uh, get that open back up. But that's on that's, my agenda. that's not passable right now. You can pass it, but mm -hmm. it's not comfortable. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. a small car would definitely have problems. Yeah, mm -hmm. I had to back up. Last. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. A pick up, a pick up. You can mm -hmm. probably get through it. Mm -hmm. but, like I said, not comfortably. Yep. So I think I can fix that with just mm -hmm. a grader and if I need a lower to a gravel, but uh, shouldn't be a big deal. So, um, yeah. Um, no we'll declaration yet, right? Skip or? No, no, no. 
funding for the flood this year? You think there will be, or is there I think any the talk about it? Has requested one. Yeah, it's just taken time to get okay. from the governor to the president okay. and then back. Yeah. Plus, uh, in addition to July 10th, there's this other that happened up in St. John's, very Lindenville. I don't know what I, they I roll they those all together. What? I heard they were trying to combine those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would the make sense. Was trying to clump that in yeah. together with the, with the July 10th. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, our rail trail happened just before July 10th, right? Uh, it did? I think so. No? Okay. I think it was July 10th. I think that's when it, oh, when it happened. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, because we talked about it. And but they already said we couldn't hook it on to last year, right? No, we can't. Right. Do that. Last year's is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it would be part of this new. If there's a new declaration, it would, could be part of that. Yes. Okay. Otherwise, we have to pay for it. If there's no declaration, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Or there might be some other avenues of funding available. Ah. Uh -huh. Mm. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, yeah maybe this what emergency about? watershed protection program. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Well, the Snow Machine Club at one point said they would help with it. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yeah, and I believe they're still willing to. Mm. Right. They were. They were. They were supposed to help with last year's flood. They mm. were, but then we ended up getting. Well, we haven't got the money right. yet, yeah, but right. FEMA's right. supposed to pay for all of it. Yeah. So right. it's like, why make them pay mm. if FEMA's gonna pay? Yeah. So yeah, if it's not a priority, maybe so maybe well this year it's going to be a priority when, mm -hmm. when November rolls around. Right. We want to exactly. travel that. Right. It's going to be a priority for yeah. them. So if we don't jump on it, what I mean to say is they're going to come and put pressure on right. us to fix it so yeah. they can get through right. it. Right. So maybe they would be willing to mm -hmm. cough up a little bit because this is mm -hmm. a smaller project. Mm -hmm. Last year was pretty astronomical mm -hmm. amount of money to repair. This year is not that much. Yeah, but, it, but that. it ended up being what thirty thousand maybe last year. Was thirty thousand right here? I have about twenty six thousand. Oh, I was close. Oh. <laughs> Do you have any guess as to what it would be for this time around to repair the damage? Well, uh, again, it depends on what we decide on for repair. Uh huh. I'm suggesting a a, a header, concrete yeah. header. Hmm. Uh, to keep that from washing, to make it more expensive. Mm. It's a little more time consuming and, and more mm. expense. I mean, now I can go and just fill the void in with regular gravel, mm. but that's not going to be a long term mm. fix. It's mm -hmm. not going to, you know, it's just going to happen again, most mm. likely. So I, I like to, you know, mitigate and do, do a little bit more. Is that something? That's a big word for me. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Is that something? Thanks for noticing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 do it again next year. So, no, I mean, I just, you know, this is going to be a new thing. This is a fairly new thing for us, and it's not going away. These right. floods, this heavy rains. Mm -hmm. I mean, any chance we can to better our culverts and our waterways is, mm -hmm. is, is money well spent. And we've gone for years and years and years with no expenses on that rail trail. And we've never budgeted for it, and we probably should. Yeah, well, because we're 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 obligated. Responsible, right? Yeah. In the lease, right? Alfie, are you looking to do that work while you still have the big excavator to the rail trail? Um, ideally, but not necessarily. Okay. I haven't seen it since since July after the July flood, so uh -huh. I don't know if these other rains have oh. caused more damage. Mm -hmm. I mean, the caller could be down on Route 14 by now, as far as I know. I really gotcha. Yeah. Right yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. But if it's not, if it's still there, I think I could probably do it with the smaller excavator. Mm -hmm. um, and I could let the, let the big one go, or save that until later on after the work with the big one is done. Mm -hmm. Okay. I do, however, need the, the big one for the corkscrew bridge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we're going to do that, and that's something we should decide on. Remind me, the corkscrew bridge is the bridge that's affecting one, uh, um, one oh, single family. family right. Home. But we decided that the last meeting, the like, fire truck couldn't go over it, that we needed to move ahead with that, whether we have a yeah, declaration I, you know, or not. I got vibes that we were going to fix yeah. it. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, we, we can't really find any solid evidence that it's on any of our town road maps, but we've always treated it as a town road. And I think, well, there is one source I haven't looked into for as far as a map, but we repaired the bridge before, so I replaced it, I guess. Yeah, I think uh, that's what attaches to we, right. I thought we like, knew it was a class yeah. four road. Yeah. So Dana, did you go looking, did you do some research? I guess I had thought that we were sure it was a class four road, but did you do research that didn't prove that? Uh, the only research I did was looking at the state maps online. I did okay. actually I had a an idea to go in and <clears throat> research some of the uh, surveys that were done by Russell Deming of some of the Meyer property over the years because I know there's at least some maps that have that Corkscrew Road on there, but whether or not it'll just say Corkscrew Road or whether it'll say Town Highway or Corkscrew Road, I don't know. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. On the VTrans map uh, from 2014 um, of Town Roads, Corkscrew Road is not on that map. Mm -hmm. um, and then the same, you know, from the last meeting, the extension of Bailey Bridge Road past the Class 4 part down to the two lakes is also not on the road, mm -hmm. not on the map. So, so does, yeah. is that like conclusive that it I isn't? don't know if it's conclusive okay. or not. I don't know where they get their information from. If they get it from the town, mm -hmm. it's probably not. All well, there. Robin dug out some maps from back when the, uh, the other state developer had a big plan for making all the subdivided lots and mm -hmm. Going to have a marina connecting Greenwood Lake and Valley Lake, and oh you know all these beautiful things that never happened. That Peter ended up own, owning most of the lots, I think. But anyways, Robin dug out those maps, and all they say is, uh, you know, development road. I guess I don't it doesn't. Know. I feel like we shouldn't be doing work to roads if we're not right. pretty solidly well, well, convinced that they're town yeah, the, roads. The class three, it was upgraded from. A small section of class four to a larger section of class three. They went through the process uh, probably at least ten years ago, and they didn't they didn't finish the process. But I do recall. I know that they did at least approve it as class three up as far as wherever it is you turn around now. Are we talking about Bailey Bridge? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, right. So beyond, because there were like four houses on there already, yeah. and they did the process of upgrading it to class three standards, but they didn't go beyond there because there was nothing but a couple of camps way down there. Right. So, so I'm going to have to get, to go, get back to Khaki and, and tell her that. Bailey yeah. Bridge, are you asking? It's, it, it's, the class three is up to the top of the hill. And, and then once the you start heading road, down. There is a road that goes down, mm -hmm. and that's class four pretty much, at least from, this is my judgment on what's on the map. I think it's class four maybe to the bottom of the hill. No, 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 no. after, it's, after okay, where after they that, found around, okay. after the turnaround, the, the part that was upgraded to class three when mm -hmm. Peter built the new house, and there's a couple other houses out there now. Beyond that, it's not class four. Okay. There's no, no well, on, indication. On the, the V-Trans map, there's a section it's class three, and then there's like an eighth, tenth of a mile section yeah. that's designated as class yeah, That used to be, yeah, that's, that's what it used to be. Okay. But, the, but the new part that was upgraded years, you know, within memory anyways, uh, is not on the map because this, the town never went the step okay, of so getting it on the map so we don't get our whatever money we usually get. So, so yeah. While we're talking about this, I actually got a call from... Person that owns land down there, owns a camp down there. Yeah. He's now turning it into a year round. Uh huh. So he's asking for that to be um, brought back to a class, or brought up to class three. Um, well, he'd have to pay for it. That's what I told him. I said, I said, I don't know exactly how Woodbridge does it, but mm -hmm. they'll, uh, they might take it over if you pay to bring it to the stand. Yeah, I, you know, yeah, I don't know. Um, so he's supposed to talk. I said, I yeah. put it back to you guys because mm -hmm. that's your decision. Yeah. Uh, I just said, you need to call the select mm -hmm. board and have a conversation with them about that. 
Mm-hmm. The thing is about that road is that when it was originally built, I mean, this was probably in the 90s, they did a really good job for a development road. The class, the class three part. The whole part, the whole thing was right. pretty we well saw, built we compared to what it... Where we yeah, were. I know, but, the, but what the developer did uh, when he first had this big grandiose plan was he built that road, did quite a good job. For a, you know, and so when when they wanted to upgrade the section to class three, it wasn't all that expensive because they just had to, you know, clear out the ditches and yeah, yeah. add some gravel. So beyond there, I think it's too. But anyways, it doesn't matter. The uh, state has standards for class three roads, and so I just want to let the everybody know that we are over our time. No. I, said, I said I would be. Um, uh, Try to keep us on track. I'm happy if the board, especially the board, would like to continue the road commissioner's report. We can do that, or we can um, move to super pressing stuff and then move on. Uh, biggest thing for me is an answer about Corpse Grove. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, I need that big update before that, and we don't want to have to rent it again later on. Well, I think you should go ahead and do it. I disagree. Um, I think, Alfie, are you able to, like, or somebody, I I'm think sorry. we should research it and figure out if it is a class four road. Did you say you disagree? I do disagree. Oh. I don't think we should just do it if we aren't sure that it's a class four road. Um, so, I mean, I guess I would volunteer to try to do some research. Um, it's Unless that's mm -hmm. something, like, if you have access to a road map at the town garage and if it's... There is a Easy to figure that out. It's not, it's not on, on, that. on the state so, map. No. Okay. <laughs> There's a road map in the, in the little, um, well, it used to be where the select board map at the <laughs> town office, too. I mean, I think you have to look at the, you know, like at deeds, different deeds. Oh, God. That around yeah, you, you've around got some work kind of mm. Okay, maybe I'm unvolunteering. <laughs> the, I mean, the one thing that's going to tie you to it is, is that you've worked on that bridge before. And that's that means that you're <coughs> you're. So we've assumed um, responsibility well, for it. That person kind of has a right to rely on the fact that we'll keep it passable. I mean, it's not like it fell in or anything. Is it a whole lot of work that needs to be done? Uh, the the bridge needs to be taken off. The, oh. the deck needs to be taken yeah. off, and they're on one side of the abutments, which is only boulders. It's just built with boulders. Uh -huh. That has settled and and it's unlevel. Are we talking about a day's worth of work with the big excavator? Um, probably a day, maybe two. Mm -hmm. It's probably most of the day we get the cap, the bridge off, mm -hmm. the deck off, and then another day to, to reset the blocks. Mm -hmm. They're on both sides of the bridge. There are these huge concrete blocks that, the, that they're setting on. The blocks are sitting on these just rubble uh, boulders. And the water came down and washed out behind the boulders, allowing them to settle. Huh. So that's why mm. the bridge is sitting kind of on level. Mm. Mm. So I think, yeah, I would count on a couple of days with the machine mm -hmm. and, and my guys to, you know, we got to take the guardrails off, we got to disconnect them. You know, the bridge is just kind of setting on these concrete mm -hmm. blocks. And so, and the lady will receive fair warning to. Yeah, yeah, I've already talked yeah. with her. Yeah. I've already talked she can with stay her home for that. a couple of days. I may have to build a bridge, a walking bridge. <laughs> She'll probably, you know, be able to manage. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, she knows. She will know. I've already been, yeah. I've been talking with mm -hmm. her some about yeah. it, and but I think, you know, she's. Around 80, we don't want her taking chances walking. Right, no, she wouldn't walk anywhere the from wall. there, anyways. Hmm. It's no, not like she. she if no one her house to her truck. Her, she would park her truck out by 14. She could, yeah. She's got to walk from the trail oh, to her house. Oh, but, so but even if she doesn't move her truck, even if she stays home for two days. Yeah. I wouldn't feel right <laughs> asking her to do that. I no. Mean, she may have to go to the doctor. She well, you yeah, know, there's always emergencies. Um, yeah. I, you know, I think mm -hmm. that there should be access to to mm -hmm. anybody's house at any given time. So what would you think about um, the board 
haven't, if Alfie can do this, set in the project for like that last week that you would have the big, big excavator. And in the meantime, that would give you some time to find out that it wasn't a town road. And then if you can't find that out, I think it sounds like, this is just my opinion, that we've assumed responsibility for it in the past. So it sounds like we're going to be, in the eyes of the law, responsible for that in the future. Um, yeah, so just to ask a few more questions about that, like, I'm not looking to set out to prove that it's not a town road. I just don't want to be, like, willy-nilly doing work on these roads if we don't even, you know, as a rule of thumb, I think, like, we should be looking to make sure that we are responsible for them before we put the money in. Mm -hmm. Um, but, I mean, if it's definitely something that we've worked on, if everybody feels solidly that that is, you know, kind of a precedent that's been set, then... I guess I would be okay with just going ahead to do it. Mm -hmm. um, it just seems like there's a lot of roads out there that we aren't <coughs> solidly sure of, like what their status is, and you know, I don't know. There's a lot of money getting spent. Yeah, it would be nice to have somebody to like do a project for six months to research all our right. roads. That would be nice, but we could have a policy and. Well, I mean, we, <laughs> we don't. Not to pick on any particular bridge, but we're not really certain that. That twenty three is a class four. Yeah. Or where that twenty four stops. 20, yeah. 24, I mean. Yeah, exactly. Where does that stop? Uh, right. So. The map says it stops at, at the water. So yeah. did the town build that bridge originally when the house was built, or did the individual? The granite so, company. <laughs> I mean, it, you've got to be careful with what can of worms you open because mm -hmm. it could get really big. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so I'm I'm not going to try to hold this up um, if everybody feels that the work we've done in the past is good enough to um, set a precedent, then I'm good with continuing. Yeah. I was on the select board when the bridge was repaired. Oh, uh, nice. as yeah. was I. As, yes. Oh, okay. 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 So, so we assumed that it was ours at the time. Yes, okay. it was assumed then that mm -hmm. it was a class four road. Um, we had a different road for them, of course. But mm -hmm. Um, and it was determined to be derelict at that point, or, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. so that it needed to be repaired. Um, so, and there is a legal precedence for a town uh, working on a road. Um, I can't remember this particular term for it. Um, there's two words, but I can never remember what they are. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't think this person would hold the town responsible, but. Um, but she wouldn't have much choice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she probably she's an eighty year old woman living in a trailer, she probably can't afford to repair it on her own. Mm -hmm. Does that give you enough direction? Sounds like Sounds you're good. I, I was the only catch off for you know, <laughs> I'm no, stepping aside. I, I, okay. I, I agree. I, I agree that they are doing a lot of work on um, all of our roads and mm -hmm. we should make sure that we own them. Mm -hmm. But I think on this one, the work that we've already done in past years that mm -hmm. tells us that we, you know, even if it's not a class, mm -hmm. even if we determine it's not a class four, you've already fixed it. Okay, so you've we've already, already assumed. You've already taken ownership of this road. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's, you know, when FEMA, like some of the work that Skip and I have done through FEMA, you have to prove that you have done work on you know, class four roads mm -hmm. to prove that it's a class four oh, road. Mm -hmm. yeah. Look to prove that it's an obligation to the town. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's what's resonated in my mind that we have to that mm -hmm. we are responsible for this particular bridge because we've already done work to it. Mm. So you feel you have the approval to go ahead with that? Put that on your schedule, or do you need more? I don't think you need to vote on it. I okay, okay, it. just go for it. <laughs> you have my approval. <laughs> All right, okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, I just, it's, it's no different than Carol. Carol doesn't want to be mm. without the right. ability to get across if right. there's an ambulance or a, yeah. or a fire truck or, and, mm. and we've done a lot for Carol. Mm -hmm. we've done it now mm. twice, and mm. we're not done yet. Yeah. Um, yeah. But this is, I mean, yeah. it's no different really. Yeah. So I feel like. Mm -hmm. So Just one more quick question on a class four road. Have you heard anything from Nichols Dam Road? 
Has uh, anybody come to you with any requests for material or anything? Uh, no, they just way back when they asked for road close signs. Uh, I put road close signs up. Oh, during the eclipse? Or, yes. When was that? Eclipse. Oh. Right after the flood. Right In after April. The... Oh. So. Uh, I mean, the road that goes down to the dam, the one that we uh, we now acknowledge as our class four uh, road. No, I haven't heard anything okay. of that. So, um, I can fill you in a little bit on that. Um, I didn't go to the Nichols Pond Association meeting. Um, happened last weekend, I think, or the weekend before. But um, they are planning on repairing the road, road some. Um, and uh, Nick Meyer, uh, the EB Hyde excavator, has been used before. Um, I don't know if they know that they can request gravel or not. Um, but, um, well, we, yeah, we mean. I haven't, there was nothing in the meeting minutes I that they were going to request yeah. gravel from the town. Uh -huh. Well, I think, yeah, they should. It, I mean, he has uh, given. Gravel to Class Four Road residents if they were going to do their own work, and I think that would be the, the same situation with with yeah. the. I mean, that's another here. Class Four Road where there is a group of people that use that road that claim it's yeah. a private road. Right. We don't. We don't need to go well, there. It's our road. We're not going to go there, but yeah, <laughs> I agree. It's our road. But, um, but there. Yeah. Anyway, it sounds. But there like are enough that they can contribute towards. They have an association, and they can yeah. contribute towards some of their own maintenance. Yeah, and, and mm -hmm. we have a person that can has done the maintenance yeah. in the past. Mm -hmm. Oh well. So okay. Thanks. Thank you. I, I have been using sort of using my judgment on yeah. these class four yeah. roads as they as they request gravel. Mm -hmm. Um. But. Sometimes they ask more than what I think is necessary. Well, sometimes I wonder whether they would be happy to just like pay for it. You know, if there's a question. Yeah, but and, the town can't accept money. Why not? Because we're a nonprofit. I don't know. Maybe they can. Sure can. Well, it does set a pretty scary precedent. Yeah, it does. Well, you know, if somebody if somebody comes to us and we say, <coughs> well, we aren't really sure that's a town road. Uh, we can help you out, but it's going to cost you. But, you know, it's better if they cook, they hire somebody else. Muddy in the waters. Yeah. 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 They can go to gravel that. construction and get some gravel. Huh? They can go to gravel construction oh, okay. and get some gravel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm going to recommend that we move on yeah. to... Okay. Thank you, Alfie. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to recommend we move on to the recovery officer's report. Yep. All right. So... A somewhat more positive report. I know. It's mm. great. That Paul had. And I feel for Paul because uh. we lost our PDMG last week as well. Oh. And there's been no one assigned yet. And anyhow, I'll get into that in a little bit. So, what's been going on? I participated in a tabletop site inspection, <laughs> which is, you know, this nine page form that you go over with with some guy. From DC, and this is for the speed radar sign. Oh, go figure. And so that was happened on August 6th. Mm -hmm. uh, on August 5th, I signed a Department of Public Safety sub recipient grant agreement for it on the town's behalf. The grantee is uh, Brandy Smith, so uh, the state has signed off on that, so we're all set in terms of the process to start really, uh, receiving funds. Uh, we had a video conference call on August 7th where the program delivery manager announced he's leaving, no mm. replacement mm. announced, which is, you know, mm. this will be the fifth one wow. since September. So mm. every time a new person comes in, you have to train them. Yeah. And so anyhow, so that's gonna result in delays probable for projects that are pending initial project development. And those projects, uh, uh, where are they here? County Road, Cabot Road, 10 and 20, North Handy Bell Road, Nichols Pond Road, et cetera, et cetera. And are those projects that haven't even made it to Puerto Rico yet? No, they're still <laughs> sitting in the queue. Will Great. Okay. Sitting in the queue, and Willis is in the queue. Some 
back in October. Mm. So, you know, I can feel Paul's frustration. Mm -hmm. mm. So that $6,000 and something that we got, was that for the speed sign? No. Oh, okay. No, it's really exciting. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, to, much to my surprise, in my inbox on August 6th was uh, two forms. One FEMA subgrant application and one State Department of Public Safety financial report that they asked me to sign. And this is for project number 741693, which is Town Highway 23 re bridge replacement, replacing it with a temporary bridge to the tune of $6,533. Mm. So the good thing is, is that arrived in Brandy's coffers, if you want to call it, today. Yeah. So I wrote that. Brandy, myself, this guy, and <laughs> Danielle should go out and have an adult beverage because this is just the start of what's going to happen, yeah. which is great. <laughs> so the good news again is there are five obligated projects, and these are the projects that's made it all the way through FEMA. Mm. And the five obligated projects total about $83,500. Mm. They are Cabot Road, Town Highway 24, Bridge Repair, Old Quarry and Blake Hill Roads, and East Hill Road. So I believe in the next two weeks I'll be receiving sub-grant applications from FEMA mm. and the State Department of Public Safety financial report two of these documents for each of these projects. As soon as they hit my inbox, I'll sign them and get them on their way. So I believe in the next two or three weeks, we'll have about $84,000 going to Brandy as well. Mm -hmm. And so projects in process, there are three that are pending environmental and historic <coughs> preservation review, which is weird. One is the Hardwick Rail Trail, Woodbury Hardwick Rail Trail. One is North and South Parks, and the other one is Wilbur, Foster Hill Road, etc., etc. And those projects total 50700 Following up on projects pending initial project development again are Cabot Road, County Road, and North Haddingville Road. And following up on projects pending initial project development, projects not completed, the uh, speed radar signs and Robbins, Robbins offices, and the mitigation projects, which are those large projects you know, for approximately a million dollars. The bridges, you mean? Yeah, for both of those on Highway 23 and 24 bridges, mm -hmm. based on our report from DeWolf, mm -hmm. they were approximately, they totaled approximately a million dollars. Okay. So we did some digging on that because it appears as though we're not going to get an RFP out for that work this year. You know, I looked at the contract you folks signed with the engineer, and that just has a completion date of 2024. But so you've talked with him since. I mean, he came I, and did that. No, I'm looking at Alfie. He came and did the drilling, right? We did the Nate? drilling. Yeah. Yeah. Did but you go to that too? I mm -hmm. wasn't aware. I have. Okay. I yeah. don't know Nate's email. I don't even know okay. what he looks like. If you walk through the door, I wouldn't know. <laughs> so we had a discussion and. FEMA and the state have decided that the only way these projects could be uh, moved forward and have extensions written for them is that they were obligated. So in other words, it has to go all the way through the process to be obligated. So that's set up a red flag because we don't have any real firm costs. So the state wrote back and said, don't worry about firm costs, do estimated costs. So they have all this stuff. I signed all the documentation for mm -hmm. them to move it from Williston down to Puerto Rico oh. to start that process going. Oh, so goodness. It's, it's going to be a somewhat expedited process because if it's not obligated by, what is it, January 14th of 2025, mm -hmm. we'd be on the hook to do the mitigation project. And if it does get obligated, then we can apply for that extension? Yes. Okay. I have that in an email, which I'm going to 
hang over <coughs> your face. Mm-hmm. But if we did, I mean, I, I understood that um, Nate intended to get the project out for RFP well, in the fall. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, it, we doesn't can use the estimate. Oh, okay. There's no real rush oh. for him to get okay. it out for this particular part. Mm-hmm. So these two projects, one 542,000, the other is 457,000. Mm. If for some reason the projects come in over this, we can write to the state of Vermont for more money. Mm. Mm. Okay, so this is an estimate. You may understand it's a probable estimate for mitigation periods for these two bridges. So we're covered in that sense. So I'm going to keep on our friends at mm. FEMA and to make sure this process is expedited. And uh, have the project obligated mm. back to me so I can write for this extension mm. in December. Mm. Is that going to be difficult to get it obligated? Or do you think that you said that they might fast track this? Why would they <coughs> fast track right. this? Right, it has been fast tracked. Fast track. Mm. I've signed pre signed documents. Mm. Okay, so, it's so already as, it, as it goes down the line, they have these documents already signed. They don't have to come to me and say, sign Got the documents. <laughs> So they're already signed. Yeah. They're out of the PDMG's mm-hmm. hand because mm-hmm. he said he would do that before he left, which oh. he did. Oh. He's a pretty honorable guy. And uh, <laughs> so anyhow, they're down in Puerto Rico, and hopefully they won't get a hurricane or something like that and mm-hmm. yeah. delay the process any farther. Oh. Mm-hmm. So that's about all I have. We'll, I'm waiting for FEMA to uh, name, <coughs> excuse me, a new program delivery uh, manager. Don't know when that's going to happen. Uh, we have a Zoom call queued up for this Wednesday at 9 a.m. Hopefully someone from FEMA will show up. I do not know who to send the, uh, the uh, meeting announcement to. It's just like they vanished. Mm. You know? And, you know, I think Paul echoed that too, you know. Mm. So anyhow, that's where we are. We have money coming in, which is, to me, just astounding. Yeah. Mm. That's know? a big step. Yeah, in the long road. It has. <laughs> <laughs> you guys should definitely do that. So that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. No more flow charts or anything? No, 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 we're too late. I have tons of flow charts, but it's, we're too late. Oh, okay. I'll save them for the next meeting. <laughs> next time. <Yeah. laughs> um, so, thank you, Skip. Appreciate it. Um, we've done the appointments. We have a Swenson Granite, um, a complaint about increased traffic and noise. Yeah, I just wanted to report that we did have a complaint that these new trucks that Brandy has mentioned uh, that are hauling grout are, are really big dump trucks and they're a lot noisier than the uh, big transport trucks that transport the big blocks of granite. So this is that a- is probably... I started working on a letter to them. I think it's time to reopen some negotiations because... We don't know exactly what they're doing up there and what they have permits for and what they don't have permits for. And and uh, they haven't increased the amount that they give us for money for a long time. I, I don't know where my file is on this, but I do have, um, I did, I've been doing some research on how much they, uh, in 2019, they got the permit to move the new entrance and we did a whole uh, rebuilt that whole road. I don't think you were here yet. And I would have figured out who paid for that. Big. It's, I don't know whether we had a grant or whether it's... Is that entrance in for the new section? From the, old, from the old road to the new entrance was substantially upgraded. I think Chuck was working on that at the time. I'm yeah, pretty sure the town paid for that. I was on the slave board. Yeah. Did you say 2016? Yeah. 19. 19. I think there was a grant. I think the town got a grant yeah. for, for resurfacing that. Yeah. And I only, I only hear that through the grapevine. Yeah, Brandy mm-hmm. probably knows. She might remember. 
So, yeah, in 2001, they got a permit to increase to 400,000 cubic feet a year, and then um, later they got an increase to 750,000. Um, in 2001, the, before two, in 1991, they started giving us five cents a cubic foot. And and 2001, that 10 years later, they increased it to 6.5 cents, and it's been that ever since. And things, you know, are costing more. <laughs> at, one po at one point, they did ask that we somehow, or that the road crew keep track of what additional costs were incurred by babysitting those trucks, and I don't think that ever happened. That never happened. That was on the switchboard <laughs> and, and uh, the road. Yeah, road but we certainly do. Yeah. I mean, they need something in the winter. They call and they oh, yeah. get it. So. Yeah, I mean, we pay yeah. extra attention to that. Right, yeah. With the salt and with the sand and the whole. Yeah. yeah. So anyways, I'm doing some more research, and I'll get that letter um, off to you guys. To Do you expect okay. to invite representatives? I, you know, we, we could do that, but if, if I throw out this letter and we start some negotiations, it might not have to have, happen. See what they say. Okay. Thanks for doing that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, because they're not paying us anything right now for all that grout they're taking off that hill. Right. What is, what is grout? Grout is it's the big chunks stone. of that fall off when they're making the big block that the guys okay. call to bury. But they That's somehow so, get so it. It's a waste product. Square blocks that you see on the road, it's mm -hmm. sort of their waste product. Mm -hmm. What do they use it for? Gravel. Gravel. They crush yeah. it, up, break it up, crush it up, and put it back on the roads. They don't crush up there, though. They did crush up there recently, within the last year or so. They did quite a bit of crushing. Mm -hmm. They had a crusher there. They hired it, hired the crushing out. Somebody yeah. else came. I can't remember the name of the. Probably McCullough. Who, I mean, it was no, it was the guy from the Jonesbury. Yeah, McDonald's, that's right. McDonald's, yeah. McDonald's, that's right. They were up there crushing. Yeah. That, was that was right before or during the, the right after the flood. Crushing granite. So, yeah. yeah. It was <laughs> three years ago. There's a big one. mountain of crushed Cause gravel. Cause gravel. We I know. Chuck <laughs> was kind of um, working on maybe a, a way of getting, you know, having them give some of that to the yeah. town for yeah. it. But then he determined that the stone was probably too sharp. Oh. to use yeah. the first stone. Yeah. So. Mm. And their terms weren't all that comfortable. Right. They, they came to me when I was for Callus, working uh -huh. for Callus, and uh -huh. they wanted to sell Callus a bunch of it also. Oh. But they wanted to sell 10,000 yards of oh. back. Oh. Oh. And I'm like, that cleans my budget out. Yeah. And then <laughs> some. There's no way a town yeah. can commit to 10,000 yards of material. Yeah. And they wouldn't budge. I was like, really? I was like no, but maybe we can do 5,000 yards, yeah. commit to it. But they said, no, it had to be 10,000. Oh. So then I started looking into, well, maybe two towns could could join efforts and and meet their quota. But it just... I mean, was the price right other than that? Uh, I think at that time it was. Yeah, yeah, I think that they was. were like 13 It was worth considering. A yard. It, yeah. wasn't, I remember. it wasn't yeah. a terrible price per yard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The attractive thing for me was it's close. You know, trucking, oh, is, right. trucking right. is killing all of it, right. any, any thing. Yeah. So yeah. it was close, so that's why I was just yeah. the idea. Yeah. But 10,000 yards is just, yeah. it was just too much, oh. and they weren't willing to negotiate off of that Isn't number. that silly? Yeah. I wonder if they found somebody. Oh, well. No, I think they <laughs> Well, we it took, a, took of, a lot of it last year yeah. for the flood. They donated that, right? Or did we buy it from them? Uh, the gravel that was crushed, we purchased. We purchased they, it. They, yeah, we purchased that. The the big stuff, the stuff that they're now smashing up. Yeah. We they donated to us. Okay. That's what we use for the ditch lining, right? The no. No. No, that's processed. We use we use the boulders, type two, type two uh, stone. 
oh. which is two foot. Oh, for places where that were totally washed totally. out. This is where it was totally oh, washed out. Okay. We, in a big hole, we put that in. Oh, the bottom. okay. Yeah. That's a good base, oh. and then and that was all donated to us. Oh, okay. It was like a hundred loads, I think, is what we. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, sort of, we didn't keep track mm -hmm. of every load because mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. just so much going on. But yeah. we, you know, the paperwork, we estimated about 100 loads. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. Anyways, not to go against <laughs> the, the fact that this needs to be re-looked at, but mm -hmm. they were very kind to us right. during a, a very yeah. desperate time. They've been good neighbors, of, so, you yeah. know, in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. To let us get that material. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or they had to get rid of it. Yeah, it was actually helping them too. Yeah, right. They needed the sticks because yeah. all this waste product there, they're just getting covered I up. I mean, yeah, you know, look at the for granite waste. I mean, geez, and girl. Yeah. They get a lot of it in Barry too. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Which there's a company down there crushing that also. Oh, really? There's a big company yeah. that's mm. brought crushers in and doing it. It's a, it's yeah. a lot. It's a lot of work to, yeah. to crush granite. And yeah. just, I'm gonna go have some of the crusher crust. <laughs> I don't think I want that job. They're still hurting bad. What was that? Plainfield. Oh, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on. Um, updates and other business. Did we already talk about the Bailey Bridge Road? We did. I thought, yeah, I thought since it was in our uh, minutes from last Knock year. Knock that off the list. <laughs> update it, but we don't have Thank to do it again. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, Michael. Yeah, so um, my fellow uh, Paul Luciano, who's working on the local hazard mitigation plan for the town, um, has fast tracked to work on that. Um, apparently, the town would be totally good if the um, local hazard mitigation plan was submitted within 30 days of a disaster declaration. Mm -hmm. um, as it's submitted to uh, Vermont Emergency Management for approval. Um, so, uh, Paul has been working, um, you know, um, put, putting attention into Woodbury's plan. Um, he's also, there are a number of other towns that are still tr trying to meet that 30 day deadline. Um, and so far, because there hasn't been a disaster designation, um, you know, there's still a amount of time. So, uh, that's the plan to have that plan submitted to Vermont Emergency Management um, within uh, 30 days of when, when and if there is a disaster declaration. So it would be within 30 days after the declaration? Not 30 before. days from when the declaration okay. is made. Yeah. So, and you know, he's working on it now. Um, yeah. So um, that's what's happening with that plan. Yeah. And you did some survey or something? Was uh, that part of it? Yeah, it, part of the redoing the local hazard mitigation plan is um, that we put out a survey. I think we have um, 35 responses from oh. the town so mm -hmm. far. Um, and that's probably all we'll get mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. And we did, we did a survey last time too. That's, mm -hmm. that's part of the process. Mm -hmm. There's a note in here, Diana, for other flood mitigation projects, or is that? Um... There was some, we talked about it one or two meetings ago. About... Yeah, so this other, um, I can't remember the name of it, but the one that I was working on a pre-application for, um, I did the work on the pre-application and I sent it on to the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission for them to review. Um, they're supposedly helping the town with that project. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the flood happened, the July 10th flood. And so they've been totally uh, straight dealing with that. Um, but the, the deadline for submitting it is now, instead of August 16th, it's now August 30th. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, so that pre-application will get submitted in time, um, and then who knows what we'll do from there. Mm -hmm. Was this you just submit an application and then I can't just refresh my memory. You didn't have a specific project in mind necessarily. Yes, I did. You I, did. I had a very okay. specific project in mind. Um, it's basically um, 
It's for to try to again work to eliminate flooding in Woodbury Village. Mm -hmm. It would be a hazard mitigation grant, which is a FEMA grant, which is the same thing that we did that ended up, you know, it was for stream mitigation, but it ended up being getting rid of the old store. Um, and Diana did a lot of work on that particular grant as a town clerk. Um, but this will be um, to basically have. Um, engineers, stream people, take a look at the whole Buck Lake watershed. Um, so water that runs out of Buck Lake, along the ridge line, oh, I remember. Yeah. and then it drops down into the village. To consider that as a whole, if we can get it past Route 14 into this beautiful floodplain area, um, down here, you know, over there, I guess, at this point, um, then maybe we can, um, Probably not totally mm -hmm. eliminate flooding mm -hmm. in the village, but um, so it would be a very big project. It, it's like years in mm -hmm. the making. It's not going to happen right off. And the first step is a pre-application. So um, you know there will be a lot of other towns, mm -hmm. municipalities submitting pre-applications, and then they all do a process of choosing which ones will get go to the mm -hmm. next stage, which will be an actual application. Um, so that's that's where and so that's will be submitted mm -hmm. um, by August three and maybe they'll push the date back for a time. <laughs> Thanks. But, but so it's it's like a whole looking at the big picture. I mm -hmm. think we've kind of looked at the parts and <clears throat> fixed parts, mm -hmm. and um, but this would be taking into account the whole the whole thing. You said, well, guess we still don't know whether those people in the yellow house are applying for a buyout. I haven't heard one no. way or the other. The, according, Paul has said yes, they are. Paul Saruti. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I don't if know. If that were to happen, seem like you could, you know, uh, make that end of the stream wider. Right now, yeah, right it now goes through the bottleneck. new. Yeah. Right, it goes through the new culvert, and then it has to go. Right. Yeah. Anyways, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's why it backed up and went out of the other one or whatever. Mm. Uh, Thanks for the refresher. Yeah, sure. thank you. It's easy to get lost with all the different it is. <laughs> <laughs> possible places that we can flip. Mm -hmm. um, and it's probably, mm -hmm. or actually, I'm not sure who, who's this for. The town office building flood repairs. I just want to say to Robin that Steve Currow is coming Thursday. Just coming through to Yeah. Okay. To uh, look at the ductwork thing. I talked to him about it again today. That I mean, you were there when he said that was the way to get more heat into that downstairs room. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know. You said his name is Steve? Steve Coro, yeah. Oh. K with a, with a, or with a K. So Brandy is holding on to their bill. They did submit a bill. Well, work's not done, so. Mm -hmm. And I guess the, the plywood that Skip was talking about, I guess that's something that the people will do when they're installing the cabinet or whatever on the back side. I think they're going to want that done before. Do they want us yeah. to do So maybe it? when Mike hangs the sheetrock, we could ask him to hang a couple of sheets of plywood too. And I will text him. I know he's right straight out, but I will bother him when we leave here. That's something I can do too. <gasps> okay, so yeah, it wasn't clear they whether can't do it. They okay. wanted that. It'll take just a second. Okay, so thank you for working on the town hall RFP. I, I, I looked know you at didn't it have some time. more. Yeah. I, I actually looked at it for probably 10 minutes today and I sent a message to Pam to see if she would print it out for me because. It's mind numbing. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't it's terrible. look at it yet. Sorry, I saw it come through, but I was like, can't yeah. look at this. Yeah. yeah, and I did my best with the formatting, but that was a frustrating experience. I bet. Um, Something else we might have to do in that little cubby where they're going to put that sheetrock and the computer stuff is get that light working. Oh, yeah. You mentioned that, or somebody else mentioned that? I don't know, maybe you. Because I was down here the other day getting a, a different wreath to put on yeah. the door, and yeah. it's, the light does not work. Maybe Tim could do that. I mean, I'm sure he could. Yeah. 
If C's not out straight. I try to stay out of that conflict oh, of on. interest, you know. So, um, but I can call you know how to get a hold of him. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He did some yeah. other wiring down there, so yeah. So if we decide that that scope of work in RFP is okay, um, what is what are the next steps? How does that go out, or how do we issue an RFP? Because it's unlikely we'll get it done this year, but it'd be nice to have somebody yeah. lined up for the yeah. spring yeah. Or next year. Yeah, I guess we have to do also a, a short version, of go in an advertisement, and right. you see it. I can work on that. We see other towns doing that all the time, and I sometimes I think to cut it out. <laughs> sometimes I don't. So you need a short version of the RFP. I need mean, like to just say we're this we're we're looking for. Yeah, and you can, with the ad, you just let them know that there is an RFP, and if right. they're interested, then they would contact oh, the town, yeah. and you could send them the whole the whole thing. And that goes into a newspaper. We have places right. we have to put it, right? right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll, put a link, I'll put it on the uh, web page. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and you can go in Front Porch Forum, and, uh, and so they can click on it and read it without having to come all the way to Woodbury. Really? Yeah. Oh. Sounds good. So, Thank you. Yeah, but they can't submit the RFP the electronically. No. No. Uh, All right. Um, so we need to approve bills, payroll orders. We already set the priority tax rate, which is good. Um, and then we will adjourn when we're done with that stuff. Okay. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Yeah, all of you. Really appreciate all you do for the town. This is the uh, proposal from RV Technology. Oh, really? Okay. And I left Michael with the summary of the cost. I think you have to just say, if you guys want that, if you want to. And that's a good oh. deal. Oh, that's it. Oh. Does uh, it go like copy? Thank you. You want it? See ya. Maybe tomorrow? They have a good reputation. What's tomorrow? Do you know <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Okay. Can nobody jump? I'm gonna slam this door. Put that, put that in there with that. We'll find out when I get there. This goes with this. Who wants to be in charge of it? In charge of <laughs> the proposal. The proposal. Oh, I'll keep it if you want. Do you want to? Okay. I'm not. I'm going to get a whole big bag of stuff. I'll, I'll it. keep it, but <laughs> you'll never see it again. <laughs> I'm going to steal it. I think that's the... Oh, this isn't our... We don't sign this, right? No. I don't think so. Oh, sorry. That was a payroll order. So is Jerome still taking? Yeah, because we haven't adjourned uh, yet. I am. Uh, do you want this no. Do we want to just, can we just adjourn and say, like, we're going to do this? We can just do say. Do we ever, we already talked about this. I can't remember what we settled on. I don't know. What do other boards do? Can you remind me, Jerome? You know, things happen differently. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you go to some place like Hardwick where they have a town manager and, and they have a town, uh, you know, uh, controller and all their bills are... Paid and the yeah. town has to just I collect for it. Don't have much filled, to do with it. I have, I have filled the signing of bills. Yeah. In Rochester, I think I filmed it in Calais. Sometimes. It's riveting mm -hmm. television. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, sometimes they seem to do it in the middle of the meeting. Somehow, not necessarily mm -hmm. yet. Yeah. Well, uh, on the other hand, I have to. I have to admit, my, my memory is a little easy on this. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not your most interesting, interesting thing. Maybe, maybe because it's not the most interesting. Maybe well, we'll we don't do really that. actually make emotions. So we don't really take action other than to sign these bills, right? Right, we just sign them. Yeah, so I think we can adjourn the meeting and, and sign the bills. And I'm okay with that. Somebody Jerome, will you can go tell home. Tell us if not. Okay. Yeah. So is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion is adjourned. Uh, meeting is adjourned at 8.09.